Thank you so very much for joining us this evening for the four F's of public speaking. Uh, this is part of our vice district governor training for the um, Alabama Lions. And we're excited that you've joined us this evening. As we begin to talk about the four F's of public speaking, we're going to begin to take a journey and help to paint pictures in people's minds as we move forward. Do you remember what happened on April 27th of 2011? That date will always forever be burned in my mind. And I'll tell you why. Because my son was in Tuscaloosa. He had an apartment just to the west of campus there. And it was on the second floor. And he had been corresponding with me back and forth. And he kept saying, Dad, James Spann says the tornadoes are all going south of Tuscaloosa. We don't have anything to worry about. And all of a sudden, James Spann, with panic in his voice, said, if you're in Tuscaloosa, take cover now. The directions of the tornado have changed. The tornadoes are headed toward the campus of the University of Alabama. Andrew on the second floor uh, panicked, not knowing exactly what to do. And then he remembered there was those metal stairs that led up to the second floor. He went down to the breezeway between the two apartments and he hunkered down between uh, the wall and those metal steps. He tells me that he remembers the hail hitting the cars and being able to see it. He felt the wind and the change of the air pressures. And then the wind grasped and he held on to the stairs and he realized the tornado had passed just a half mile south of him. As he went back to his apartment, all the powers out, the only news that he can get is on his cell phone is very limited. And he calls, he says, Dad, what am I going to do? And I said, son, you're going to stay exactly where you are for now. Don't go anywhere. Let's talk about this in the morning because by that time it was dark and he didn't need to be going anywhere. The next morning he called about 10 o'clock and he says, Dad, the church where I attended took a direct hit and is completely leveled and the whole community around it is completely leveled. And he says, I don't know what to do, but I know I need to do something. And I said, Andrew, look around and tell me, what do you see? And he says, in the church parking lot, Red Cross is set up. There's a tent there and they're taking uh, cases of water off and putting there on the ground. And I said, go help them unload the, the truck and then give me a call. And he says, Dad, the truck's unloaded. What am I supposed to do? Because I know that I'm supposed to do something. God has put me here for a reason. And I said, take one of those cases of water and walk down the nearest street and just start handing water out. Do what you can, when you can. These people have lost everything. Will treasure a smile, an encouraging word, and a bottle of water. And that's what he did. I think that the best way to start any public speech is to start with a story that people can relate to. Because all of us can relate to April 27th, 2011. Ray, do you remember where you were that day? Oh, uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I was at uh, Huntsville, Alabama. That was the same year I retired. And um, that was, I retired in June, I mean, July. And that was happening back in April. And I was actually home uh, visiting the VA. Well, the, the first uh, F of public speaking is feel. How do lions want to feel when you have finished spe speaking? And we've all listened to district governors that have come in, and some of them we thought we could sit there and listen for days. And others we've listened to for two or three minutes and said, when are they going to hush? And so how do lions want to feel when, when we finish? I think they want to feel uplifted. I want to think they want to feel encouraged. And I think that that's our job as lion leaders is to go in there and build them up and provide to them a hope for a better tomorrow. No matter how many members are in their club, no matter how much service they're doing or not doing, even in the times of COVID, we, we need to provide some hope to them. And how do you want the lions to feel when you finish speaking? I think we all want them to, to feel uplifted and encouraged uh, by what we've been able to say to them. And then 
what is the best way to communicate to achieve a positive outcome? And I think that that is by storytelling, by asking questions, by involving the audience. Everyone likes to have some input. No one likes to feel as if they're being talked to. They want to feel as if there's a conversation. Don't you think that's right, Ray? Oh, most definitely. And so the first F is feel and then felt. Emotion is the fast lane to the brain. If we as lion leaders can take and have the audience feel with their emotions, we're going to get their brain engaged. I recall one presentation that I made as international director and the theme was New Horizons. And as we talked about those horizons and over here on the top of this mountain, there's all of these people who have vision problems. And on the peak next to them, there's 8 million people in the United States uh, suffering from diabetes. And we're painting pictures and beginning to, to bring in the emotion. Everyone is beginning to relate to what we're saying and they're hanging on to every word. And our jobs as vice district governors and as district governors is to begin to have our presentation felt by the audience. What did you feel as I shared that story of Andrew and his uh, experience with the tornadoes? Uh, me, myself, personally, I, I mean, I felt like I was there. I felt like I really want to do something too to help, you know, because that's a time that uh, everyone has to come together and, and to get through this, this tragedy. And if we as lion leaders can go into clubs and have our lions walk away with that feeling that I can do this, then we have achieved our purpose. What did I as a speaker want you to feel? I wanted you to feel that every little act of kindness was important. Serve when you can and where you can. I think that people will remember that point when they, when they think of a tornado the next time, that we just serve when we can and where we can. Was that point driven home okay, Ray? Oh, yes, most definitely. And so we gotta, we've got to understand how we want them to make them feel. We want them to, to have felt the emotion when we finish. And we want them to have found or discovered something. As a speaker, what did you discover from the story that we just shared? We found out that, you know, what had happened uh, uh, and uh, what people was trying to do to, to make things better for people that is in need at that time frame. So you felt uh, a sense of urgency there that you have to help. You have to do something. Thank you. Small things matter. And a lot of times we as lions get caught up and we want to have big projects, but sometimes just a pair of glasses brings all of their vision into sight. Sometimes just a small word at the right time. Sometimes just picking up trash along the road. It's the small things that matter. And no matter what the circumstances, you can help someone who is hurting there's always someone around us that is in greater need than we are. Even when we are down and discouraged, when we have felt that we've lost everything and all hope, if we'll take the time to focus on others, we'll find others that we can help and then we'll be uplifted because of it. And also then kindness matters. And you know, I think that as we continue to move through uh, several incoming international presidents, we're gonna see different takes on kindness matters because it does. We as lions can set the world afire by simply being kind to one another. And so it's, it's important how they feel, it's important what they felt while we were speaking, what they discovered and found, but also find. What action do you want your audience to take? That's what is important. When we as speakers finish, that we have something that we want to, to ask the audience to do. 
We want, we want to tell you about our district convention. We want you to discover all the things you've been missing, and we want you to register for the one that's coming up. We want you to, to see the tremendous needs out there. We want you to feel the urgency of serving and meeting those needs, and we want you to invite other volunteer members to join your club so that we can expand, expand our footprint of service. Does that make sense? Yes, make, make perfect sense. And what will they find or discover if they follow your lead? If you will just simply attend the district convention, you're going to make new friends, you're going to find new ideas to improve your club, and you are going to be a better lion and a better leader because of the information that, that you've picked up. If you will have a membership growth event, you will find people in your community that really want to serve that have never been asked before. And they will bring new ideas, new excitement, new energy to your club, and you're going to be able to do more than you've ever done. And so a bonus F word here is focus. Who is the focus of a presentation when you're the vice district governor, your district governor, and go into the club? Is it all about me? Or is it all about the audience? What's the focus or what should the focus be? It's the focus should be on the audience, the, the folks you have to deliver the message to because it's depending on the audience how you're going to address it and how you're going to get your message out there to them. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes we get so self-centered is how well can I do? Will people like me? Will I look good enough? And it's all about me. And that is the wrong focus. The right focus is the people. How are we going to impact their lives? How are they going to walk away better because of the information we've shared with them? How can they take the information we've shared, apply it to their lives, and then be better lions, be better moms and dads, be better employees? Because if we can add value to the lives of others, then they in turn will add values to the life of others. Plus they'll add value to the life of their club and our districts and our Lions organization is better. And if it's not about you, it's got to be all about the people that, that we're speaking to. It's got to be about them because they are the ones that are going to decide next year if they're gonna come and listen to the vice district governor or the district governor when they speak and they're the guest. And if we have not carried the torch high this year, next year it's going to be easier for them to say, oh, the governor's coming. I think I'll stay home. And so let's try to make sure that we bring our A game, not for us, but for them, and that we help them to feel what we're saying, help them to remember how it felt as we spoke, help them to find something in there that they can use and remember what they have found in our presentation. And we can do that by focusing on our audience rather than ourselves. A speech, according to John Maxwell, should start with some audience engagement, some questions and some interchange, some type of story, and then an application. People will remember the stories when they won't remember the uh, lecture or the application. And so a lot of times, just simply by telling a couple of stories and drawing an application, we can make a bigger impact than if we just are out there trying to put forth information in sort of a shotgun, boom, boom, boom way. Slow down, take a deep breath, have that audience engagement, ask them a question. Have you ever been to a district convention? What did you think about the district convention? Uh, have you uh, ever sponsored a member? How many members have you sponsored? How long have you been a member of the club? And then tell some story. And if it's a personal story, something that, that you have lived, then it's easy for you to tell and then draw that application. Everyone has the ability to do something and we should serve how we can, whenever we can, and the small things matter. Every club will allot you a different amount of time. Some will tell you, you have 20 minutes, but then they do the, take care of their business or the meal was delivered late. And at the end of the, 
the meeting, they say, oh, and the vice governor's here to speak with us. And you may have five minutes, you may have 10, you may have 20. What I suggest is that you write a series of five minute speeches, knowing which is your most important point and your second most important point and your third most important point. And if you've only got five minutes, you pick out that most important point, you engage the audience, tell your story, make the application and thank them uh, for their time. If you have the 15 minutes, then make uh, tell three stories and three applications because they'll all tell you your, uh, that take all the time you need. What that really means is take all the time you may need, but don't make us stay more, here more than an hour. You ever been in those meetings when you thought the governor would never quit talking? <laughs> oh yeah, we've been in several meetings like that, even in the military with uh, generals as well. And so we don't need to make folks frustrated looking at their watch and saying, I'll never be back to another district governor's speech. We need to leave them wanting more. And the way we do that is by having segments and weaving our stories together, depending on the amount of time that's there. And always, if they tell you you've got 20, take 17. If they tell you you got 25, take 22. Give them back some time and you'll always be their hero. So, Ray, did we meet our objectives tonight? Uh, yes, I believe we did. Uh, we talked about the stuff and uh, like you have said, uh, I've never had it in the series as the four Fs, but that's, that was spot on. Uh, exactly what we need to do and I think to deliver the message and be gone. Well, very good. Do you have any questions or any comments or any concerns that we need to address this evening? I don't have any questions, uh, uh, concerns, but the only comment I think that, like I said, I think it's outstanding. I think it's a different way of looking at public speaking when you're actually dealing with the public out there and you're dealing with the different Lions Club because you have to take a look at what, when you're getting your speeches together, what this Lions Club really need to hear uh, some of the things you need to pass on to them. It could be talking about fundraising. It could be talking about current events. It can be talking about uh, just some of the stuff that you know they're dealing with. And that way you'll have their attention a lot quicker, a lot easier than you would just coming off the cuff talking about stuff that may not even matter to them.